Hello, everybody, and welcome back to SFF 180. It is Monday, July the 23rd, and time, you guessed it, once again for the mailbag. I hope all of you have had a lovely week and a lovely weekend. My week was fantastic. My weekend, not so much. Uh, but it's all right. It's okay. Not to worry. We have a big old stack of book mail that's come in to cheer us up. Uh, eight packages arrived in the mailbag this week, so I'm going to go ahead and get into those. And also convention season is coming up, which I think will be very helpful in taking my mind off of some things. Two weekends from now will be ArmadilloCon in Austin. Two weekends after that, Worldcon. And I think two weekends after that, BookNet Fest. I'm trying to remember, but if you missed my convention schedule video that I posted middle of the week last week. Go ahead and check that out in case you're going to be at any of these events and you feel like coming up and saying hi if you happen to see me. Please do. Please do. Okay? All right then, without further ado, let's get into these books. And it looks like the first one is a little package from Random Penguin. Well, all right, this first one is an arc from Delray Books. And it is for Dragon's Code, which is a new uh, Dragon Riders of Pern novel by Gigi McCaffrey, the daughter of Anne McCaffrey, and of course Todd McCaffrey, her son, has also written several Pern novels. The McCaffrey family, I guess, is just, it's the family business now, and they are keeping that gravy train chugging along. I have not read a Pern novel in probably half past forever. <laughs> so I am not up with, you know, the lore or the mythology of it or anything like that. I'm not current with it. But if you are an ongoing reader and a fan, this will be out October the 2nd. Dragon's Code. Uh, this original Pern story adds to the family tradition of spinning fascinating tales that recount the adventures of the brave inhabitants of a distant planet who battle the pitiless adversary known as the Thread. The last time the Thread attacked Pern, the world was unprepared for the fight until the old timers appeared. They'll fix everything. The courageous dragon riders arrived from the past. Okay, traveling 400 years to help their descendants survive. But the collision of past and present took its toll. While most of the displaced rescuers adapted to their new reality, so I guess they didn't intentionally come forward? Who knows? Others could not abide the jarring change and found themselves in soul-crushing exile where unhappiness and resentment seethed. Well, that sounds like a very relatable situation. Okay, then. Uh, but this comes out, like I said, on October the 2nd from Delray Books. Uh, once again, Random Penguin. Okay, well, this is something. This is a uh, finished copy. It's a hardcover of a new book called The Point. The author is John Dixon. And uh, we have two different comparisons here. One of them says X-Men meets the Maze Runner in a bold sci-fi thriller. And then there's a Publisher's Weekly quote that says more than human, for all of you classic SF fans, meets Dress Gray in Dixon's rousing mashup of military SF thriller and paranormal adventure. Hmm. What if you had a power you had to hide from everyone until now? In this daring new sci-fi action thriller, a secret training program at West Point turns misfits into a new generation of heroes. Anyway, welcome to The Point, future leaders of the post-human age. Uh, new cadets, a society is not ready for you. The oldest, fiercest fear is ignorance. The general population would burn you at the metaphysical stake. Here you will train alongside other post-humans. You will learn to control and maximize your powers and to use them for the greater good. Okay? You will discover camaraderie and purpose. You will become a part of something bigger than yourselves, the long gray line. Okay, and I guess it goes from there. All right, then. Uh, Military SF meets Paranormal Adventure, and it is called The Point, and it comes out on August the 7th from Delray Books. All right, and here we have what looks like it's going to be a tour title. Okay, not quite, but I was close. It's from St. Martin's Press, which is also a Macmillan in print. It is called The Maze Master, or just Maze Master, excuse me. Uh, it is a thriller, it is described, and comes out... Oh, I guess it's already out. Came out on the 17th, okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Lucent B, while a fictional virus, is based off the real retrovirus Herve K, which has caused several plagues over the past 75,000 years, almost wiping out Neanderthals 50,000 years ago and maybe 30,000 years ago. Modern geneticists consider Herve K not to be extinct, but rather to be waiting for some trigger to fully come alive again. Uh-oh. The U.S. government believes the only person who can save the world from Lucent B is the geneticist who tried to warn them about it and then disappeared, James Hakari. They assign the task of finding him to his former student and soldier, Anna Asher, who in turn recruits paleographer and religious studies scholar, Dr. Martin Nadai. 
religious studies case sounds like it's trying to be a little bit Dan Brownish with that. Uh, the brilliant but insane geneticist, because of course he is, is leaving clues for Anna and Martin to follow, showing he's truly earned his student's nickname for him, the Maze Master. The search takes Anna and Martin around the world and into a war zone they never imagined. Okay, and the author is Kathleen O'Neill Gear. Sounds a bit, you know, sort of potboilery, bestsellery, as it were, but it is out now, apparently, from St. Martin's Press. And this next package is from HarperCollins. Uh, well, this is kind of nice to see. It's from a Walter John Williams, a fellow that I've known for many years, off and on, and it is called The Accidental War. And this is a new military science fiction that is set in his Apraxis universe, as it were, but it is the beginning of a new trilogy, apparently, or a new series, it says, yeah, new trilogy, got it, uh, in that universe, and it builds off, I guess, the first trilogy, which came out sometime in the 2000s, I believe. Um, and to be perfectly honest, I never got around to them, but I have them laying around somewhere. Uh, but let's see, uh, this all-new series kicks off with the Accidental War, and it's set seven years after the initial trilogy. Uh, blending fast-paced military science fiction and space opera, it's the perfect starting point, well, okay, for new fans to dive into William's sweeping universe, so I guess you don't have to have read the original. That's fine. Uh, it's been seven years since the end of the Naxid War, sidelined for their unorthodox tactics by a rigid, tradition-bound military establishment. Captain Gareth Martinez and Captain the Lady Sula are stewing in exile, frustrated and impatient to exercise the effective and lethal skills they were born to use in fighting the enemy. Yet after the ramshackle empire left by the Shah conquerors is shaken by a series of hammer blows that threaten the foundations of the Commonwealth, the result is a war that no one planned, no one expected, and no one knows how to end. Okay then, now Martina Sula and their confederate Nikki Severin must escape the clutches of their enemies, rally the disorganized elements of the fleet, and somehow restore the fragile peace, or face annihilation at the hands of a vastly superior force. And so it goes. But yeah, so this comes out uh, on September the 4th, and let's see. Available now, the practice center. Okay, well it looks as if uh, HarperCollins has reissued uh, the original trilogy, and so there are fresh editions available. It's called The Praxis, The Sundering, and Conventions of War. So they have been brought back into print if you want to read those as well. Okay, out September the 4th, The Accidental War. Hmm, and this is a roughly taped up package from HarperCollins. Looks like it came open in the mail, but miracle of miracles, the book is still in it. So let's see what we have. And I was expecting this one, everybody. This is the American edition of Record of a Spaceborn Few. Uh, the new Becky Chambers novel, and it's available July the 24th. Okay, Chambers is poised to once again blow readers away. It says, Record of a Spaceborn Few is a standalone novel set in the same world as The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, but it functions as its own literary entity. While Chambers explored the notion of home and belonging in Long Way, and the idea of individuality in a closed and common orbit, she's combined both of those themes for a truly unique spin on the classic sci-fi idea of generationships forever traversing vast expanses of the solar system. The Wayfarer novels, record of a spaceborne few included, are set in a world where hundreds of years ago the last humans on Earth boarded the Exodus fleet in search of a new home among the stars. After centuries spent wandering empty space, their descendants were eventually accepted by the well-established species that govern the Milky Way. But that was long ago. Today the Exodus fleet is a living relic, the birthplace of many, yet a place few outsiders have ever visited. While the Exodans take great pride in their original community and traditions, their culture has been influenced by others beyond their bulkheads. As many Exodans leave for alien cities or terrestrial colonies, those who remain are left to ponder their own lives and futures. What is the purpose of a ship that has reached its destination? Why remain in space when there are habitable worlds available to live on? What is the price of sustain sustaining their carefully balanced way of life, and is it worth saving it all? All right then. I am determined to give Becky Chambers a second and very fair try. Okay, I know this is an unpopular opinion around here, but my first attempt to read Long Way to a Small Angry Planet ended in a DNF. I, I just did not get on with that book, but uh, I am going to give it another try, read it all the way through, and uh, evaluate it fairly. And then I'll work my way up to the sequels. But this one is out, like I said, on July the 24th from Harper Voyager. And this is one from Tor, and it's hand-addressed. So probably, it's usually an arc when they're hand-addressed. Okay, it turns out that they are a couple of titles, and this one is already out. I've had trouble, for some arcane reason, getting some Tor stuff in in a timely fashion lately. 
Uh, but they have uh, graciously finally gotten this one to me, and this is Summerland. It is the new novel by Hanu Rayaniemi, a hard science fiction uh, superstar from Finland, and I've really been eagerly awaiting this one. I don't think that there is a sales sheet in here. Didn't, yeah, there's not one, so I'll just read from the flap. But this is uh, available now and out. It says, an awe-inspiring account of the afterlife and what happens when it spills over into the world of the living. Loss is a thing of the past. Murder is obsolete. Death is just the beginning. In 1938, death is no longer feared but exploited. Since the discovery of the afterlife, the British Empire has extended its reach into Summerland, a metropolis for the recently deceased. Yet Britain isn't the only contender for power in this life and the next. The Soviets have spies in Summerland and the technology to build their own god. Hmm. When SIS agent Rachel White gets a lead on one of the Soviet moles, blowing the whistle puts her hard-earned career at risk. The spy has friends in high places, and she will have to go rogue to bring, bring him in. But how do you catch a spy who's already dead? So, like, that sounds all kinds of cool, and it's available now. And then next up is an arc for an October tour release. This is by S.L. Huang, and it's called Zero Sum Game. And it says on the back here, Loved Trinity in the Matrix, meet Kaz Russell, a retriever with special skills. She can take any job for the right price until she takes the wrong job. And uh, so this is a science fiction thriller, and I believe the plot uh, involves mathematics to a great deal. But uh, Zero Sum Game is one that has looked pretty interesting to me. And as I said, it is an October title from Tor. So let me know in the comments. And next to last package, we have this little box here from Random Penguin. Well, this is awfully nice to see. Uh, this is a book called Gift of Griffins, and the author is V.M. Escalada. And, uh, pff, hallelujah, this included a cell sheet. Doll Books almost never does that. Anyway, this is the second book in a series called The Faraman Prophecy, and the first book was called Halls of Law. came out last year, which I got. Didn't get around to it, but it's there in my pile. And so, Gift of Griffins, it says, With a world full of psychic talents, paranormal outcasts, and magical creatures, this fantastical series, with a spunky heroine at its helm, is sure to be adored by fans of Tanya Huff and Anthony Ryan. It's a series about an unlikely heroine, and it's described by SFF World as a fun, optimistic epic fantasy that proved a welcome change of pace, it says, from some of the more grimdark fantasy I'd been reading. So if you have been maybe hoping for some uh, fantasy of that sort, uh, this series would appear, uh, appear to fill the bill. But Gift of Griffins comes out from Daw Books on August the 7th. And the final package this week is from Random Penguin. And I guess this is a nice one to wrap up with. This is the finished copy of Spinning Silver, which has been released, so it's available now in hardcover from Del Rey. Naomi Novik's follow-up to Uprooted, although it is a standalone novel on its own. I mean, that seems to be how she's doing it. These, these are fairy tale retellings, in a way, as it were, and Spinning Silver is not a thing where you have to have read Uprooted to get it. Miriam is the daughter and granddaughter of moneylenders, but her father's inability to collect his debts has left his family on the edge of poverty, until Miriam takes matters into her own hands. Hardening her heart, the young woman sets out to claim what is owed, and soon gains a reputation for being able to turn silver into gold. When an ill-advised boast draws the attention of the King of the Staric, grim fey creatures who seem more ice than flesh, Miriam's fate and that of two kingdoms will be forever altered. Set an impossible challenge by the nameless king, Miriam unwittingly spins a web that draws in a peasant girl Wanda and the unhappy daughter of a local lord who just plots to wed his child to the dashing young Tsar. But Tsar Mernatius is not what he seems, and the secret he hides threatens to consume the lands of humans and Staric alike. Torn between deadly choices, Miriam and her two unlikely allies embark on a desperate quest that will take them to the limits of sacrifice, power, and love. Channeling the vibrant heart of myth and fairy tale, Spinning Silver weaves a multi-layered magical tapestry that readers will want to return to again and again. And it is available now. And there we have it. That is the mailbag for this week. You guys know the drill. Light up those comments. Let me know which of these look most interesting and exciting to you, which you would like to see me prioritize for review. Otherwise, if you enjoyed watching, please slam that like button, share the video far and wide with all of your SFF reading friends, and above all, please subscribe. If you haven't done so, that is how the channel grows. You can also support SFF 180 at my T Public store and at my Patreon, where recruits into Wink's army get little perks like getting to see these videos early. I want to thank all of those folks for their added little $2 a month support. Very much appreciated. I want to thank you guys for being amazing and loyal viewers. You have no idea how much I appreciate that. And until I see you all next time, happy reading. <laughs>